These entitled girls are about to steal this poor woman's concert ticket, but her clever boyfriend has a trick to get some petty revenge on these conniving thieves. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamp show. So one of my best friends from my freshman year of college is a bouncer at a popular bar on campus. And once in a while, if there's a concert I like, he'll set aside a few free tickets for me, as long as I let him know in advance. And usually I pay him back with drinks, food, whatever. My girlfriend is a major Skrillex fan. Eh, whatever. I like EDM, but I don't like that bro-y kinda dubstep. It turns out a couple of her friends in class were too. So she asked me if I could get my friend to give her and her friends four tickets. I was wary because I didn't know these chicks, and they looked nasty. But I trusted her judgement. I talked to my friend, got the tickets, and gave them to my girlfriend. Turns out that my girlfriend trusted these nasty girls too much, because she gave them the tickets to hold on to. Since one of them was going to drive everyone, you could use the bus system, but this was February, and it was too cold to wait outside. Naturally, things go south, and my girlfriend is calling me, crying a few hours before the concert, saying that the girls just ditched her and decided to bring a different friend instead. Now, I was driving home for the weekend, but as soon as I heard this, I called my dad and told him I'd be a day late. As soon as I explained the situation, he laughed, because he knew I was going to do something or the other in response. I called my bouncer friend an hour and a half before doors opened, once I'd reached campus again. I let him know about the situation, and since these tickets were those print out and scan the barcode kind, he just cancelled those four tickets, and actually printed out two new ones specifically for me and my girl. I picked them up myself, and he told me he'd kick my butt if I let anyone have them this time. My girlfriend was so excited when I told her this, and we both quickly got ready. Well, I quickly got ready. We showed up right as the doors were going to open, ready to hear a bass drop so sick it would make Ebola seem like a cold. As we showed up, there was naturally a long as heck line, and luckily about 20 people in front of us were those nasty girls. As soon as the doors opened, they started letting people in, scanning tickets and checking IDs. Once the girls were getting their tickets scanned, the bouncer, my friend, saw from the error that these were the tickets that were the ones stolen. He saw me a little bit behind, and told me to wait on the side while he let in the next few people. After the next 10 people, they start whining and complaining that they should be let in because they're going to lose good spots. He tells them there's an issue with their tickets, and once my girlfriend and I show up, they immediately shut up, and their faces turned really white. He scans our tickets, says to them, Oh look, these were the tickets you girls wanted, weren't they? And they just stormed out of line, furiously. As they left, I yelled, if you want, you can just sit by the walls and feel the bass from there. Along with being a fantastic pet revenge story, I thought this had a really nice wholesome twist to it. The boyfriend was not interested in going to the concert at all, but he did this really nice thing for his girlfriend. And when he saw his girlfriend was hurt by these terrible people, he decides to cancel his plans and postpone it, not only to help her out, but also goes to the concert with her. Honestly, I think the real show would have been watching those girls getting what they deserve. I had just started working as IT manager at a new company. It was going through a couple of changes, and as a result, we had a new CEO, maybe three months after I started. He wasn't a bad bloke, just a little vague. But he did get a couple of his mates in key positions, including the newly created engineering executive role. EE e. shows up, and I dish him out a suit of new toys for him to play with. Windows laptop, Google phone, etc. EE e. isn't happy with this at all. He wants Apple. I told him that Apple products are, unfortunately, not supported. Because 1. We don't have the budget for them. 2. Our apps won't run on them. And 3. The IT team can't support them. So no, you can't have Apple products. He takes them, but is still clearly unhappy. A week later, and he is complaining for all he's worth about the gear, and starts complaining to his CEO mate. CEO comes to me and asks what the problem is, and I gave him the same response. 1. We don't have the budget for them. 2. Our apps won't run on them. And 3. The IT team can't support them. Fair enough, he says. That seems sensible. 
Another week later, EE e. comes by and chucks his now broken phone at me. He demanded that I make his newly purchased iPhone work. The conversation deteriorated at that point, and the CEO got involved. In the end, EE e. wasn't going to expense the phone to the company, and he had to support himself. But I had to put in place a bring your own device policy and allow the phone on our network. And so I did. 12 months pass by, and our relationship hasn't improved. He wins some, I win some, and occasionally we come out even. Other people start using their own phones, and I let them. As long as they follow the bring your own device policy and have a device capable of supporting it. People come and go, and the leavers with their own devices stop by on their last couple of days for me to supervise the removal of the company account. And of course I block them in the MS exchange anyway, and tick the box on their leaving form. And now, for unrelated reasons, it's EE's turn to go. I send him an alert. Hey, make sure you drop by in the next few days so we can go through the procedure. No response, no visit. And now it's his last day. I send him an alert again first thing in the morning. Hey, it's your last day. Make sure you drop by so we can go through the procedure. No response, no visit. By lunchtime, no response or visit. By 3 p.m., no response or visit. I found out that he was having a lunch party with his friends at the local bar and would be a while longer, 4 to 5 p.m. I typically finish at 6 p.m., but today I decided to have an early mark. You know, to play with the kids or whatever other excuse you want to hear. And by early mark, I mean right now. So I mark his exit form as failed to attend, disabled his swipe card access, locked his accounts, and reviewed the section on the bring your own device policy I wrote about not being able to verify that company data had been removed. And so I remotely wiped his phone. I got a message later on that he was absolutely incensed that his phone got wiped, which of course made that Friday beer all the more tasty. EE e. always insisted in getting his own way, even if it was against company policy and an inconvenience to everyone else. Even the CEO could see that. Ultimately, he was really the one who brought his own petty revenge upon himself. The IT guy was just the facilitator. Okay, so this is kind of a stupid story, and I know what I did was mean and petty, but here we go. So when I was in elementary school, there was this girl, let's call her A. A was that girl that no one liked. Why? Because she was crazy. She would lick people, jump over the bathroom stalls and watch you pee, go into your stuff without asking, and once I believe she ripped a scab off someone. So yeah, not someone anyone really liked to hang out with. So one day, when I was in fourth grade, I was eating lunch with my friend L. I had pretty small lunches that mostly consisted of a sandwich, an apple, and a small bag of pretzels. So I was pretty selective when it came to sharing, and only shared food with my closest friends. I was about to eat my pretzels when A came up to me, randomly, and asked me for my food. She kept pestering me, saying that she was starving and that she hadn't had breakfast. I felt bad and gave her my whole bag of pretzels. She also did the same thing with Elle, who was the shy new girl. Elle always avoided confrontation, so she gave A pretty much half of her lunch. We were both annoyed, but decided to forget about it, and continued with our lives. Little did she know that those acts of kindness had sparked a demon. The demon was A. A was the demon. Throughout the whole week, A would guilt trip Elle and I into giving her food. Her excuse was always, I'm really hungry and I never have anything to eat. Don't be greedy. She would say it so loud that the others would look at us unexpectedly, and we had no choice but to give her the food. It was so annoying. I was actually ready to fight her, but being the little goody two-shoes I was, never had the guts to. I don't always go hungry during school, but I thought that I was helping someone out, so I never complained. One morning, after this had been happening for a month, I saw that A had a lunchbox. It was during snack time, and L wasn't there that day, so I was by myself. I decided to follow her and see what she was doing. 
A went to empty the lunchbox harbour and opened her lunchbox. My jaw dropped. She had a bigger lunch than me. There was what looked like a turkey sandwich, a banana, some Ritz crackers, a bag of Cheetos, a bag of Lay's, and a juice box. I was very angry. How could she beg me and my friend for food every day when she had a whole lunch of her own? And why was she eating it all during snack time? I watched from behind the pillar as she ate all of her lunch. I left before she finished it all, but I know she did finish it. Later, during lunch, she came at the same time she did every day to ask me for food. I asked her why she always asked me and Elle, and no one else. She said that she did. It turned out she asked five other kids for food, and ended up with a full lunch of her own. This got me even more mad. I was ready for revenge. The next day, I got a bag of barbecue chips. I went to the spice cabinet and got the cayenne pepper. The cayenne pepper was very spicy, especially in large amounts. I put a bunch in the bag of barbecue chips and made sure that it didn't look suspicious. Once I was done, little me was ready. I filled an L on what had happened the day before and what my revenge plan was. She went along with it. At lunch, during the same time A normally came to pester us for food, Elle and I were ready. It went down like this. Can you please give me food? I'm really hungry, and I know my best friends will always share with me. She gives a fake smile. I don't know. You've never shared back with us. Why should we share with you? Well, like I said, I never have anything to eat or share. A clear lie. I don't know. I don't have much. All I'm willing to share are these chips. I said this while holding the rigged chips. Gimme! She grabs the bag out of my hands and starts eating them quickly. Hey, why did you do that? I pretend to be annoyed. You said I could have them. She starts panting as her eyes water. What are these? This bite. All of a sudden, her eyes widen and she runs to the drinking fountain. Before she got there, she threw up. Apparently, she, nor her body, could handle the spiciness. Half of the fourth grade had seen what had gone down and were now watching her throw up. One of the noon duty ladies ran over and asked if she was okay. She was crying and was about to explain what happened, but remembered that she had taken the chips from me. So all she could do was cry some more. She was taken to the nurse's office and came back to class wearing one of the extra shirts the school had. After that day, she miraculously started bringing lunch every day and never asked me for food again. I felt bad for what I did and never thought she would get humiliated from my little revenge plot, but I was glad that I could finally eat my lunch in peace and not be hungry for the rest of the day. It was definitely petty, and I'll probably never do something like that again, but it's something I thought I'd share. We've seen this before from choosing beggars and entitled parents. When they feel entitled to your property and you refuse to give it, they make you out to be the greedy one and try to publicly shame you. A true act of generosity is done voluntarily and to those who really need it. Never let these people shame you for their greed trying to take your things. Be kind and generous to those who you think truly need it. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.